Good evening, race fans, and we welcome you in double digits, round number 10. We've finally made it to the National Sim Racing League. Tonight, we are at one of the more dormant NASCAR racetracks in America, but it provides some amazing action as always. The Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet, Illinois. It's the Windy City 300. And we say hello, everyone. Marty Sakala here with you. Glad you could join us for action here on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page and on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. When you take next gens and combine them with this amazing beast in the windy city of Chicago, you're going to get some fantastic super speedway-like racing. Drivers are going to be holding it wide open, and you will not be disappointed at all. In fact... The top 21 are separated by nearly half a second. And compared to the interval of each driver ahead or behind them, the farthest is 7 one hundredths of a second. We're going to have some great racing today, and there could be a possibility of the big one breaking out. Last week at the Myrtle Beach Speedway, and we're definitely going to miss that track from years to come. Only a small field of 14 drivers, but it was Mark Sikosi taking home the race win, finally for his first win of the season, leading only five laps to get it done. And it was the final five that was the most important. So we give you the point standings and how they look nine races in. Josh Susi has the points lead up by 60 on Tyler Isley, Mark Sikosi up a spot. Jeremy Edwards drops down. They are third and fourth in the points standings. Kayla McCarthy is fifth, even with five starts this season. She is fifth in points. Has had a good season so far. Briggs Wolpe is sixth up a spot with 165 back. Josh Aaron up five spots from last week. He's up to seventh in points in the DraftKings number 77. Alan Crowell up three spots in the number 54. Jimmy Barr up a spot in the ninth spot, and Otto Cruz dropping four down to tenth position. Final seconds of qualifying underway, and tonight your pole sitter for the first time this season will be William Farmer in the number 95. Great to see him up front. Should be a car to watch out for. We do also have some notable entries. Brennan Poole makes his return to National Sim Racing League competition. Starting in the ninth spot tonight. But it is expected to be a great field. Let's break down how the race is going to go. 200 laps. The stages will end at 45, 90, and 200. Keep in mind there is a 50% fuel window in the National Sim Racing League. believe we do have that here. But let's break down the Chicagoland Speedway before we roll the drivers off. One and a half mile track can hold 47,000 people. 18 degrees in the turns, 11 degrees on the front stretch, and the back stretch, 5 degrees that has its unique arch on the back stretch. So not really a straightaway. You got to turn to the left, though, just a tiny little bit. On the outskirts of Joliet, action here never sleeps as the cars roar around. Opened in 2001, this unique speedway is becoming one of the driver's favorite racetracks. Well, with that being said, let's give you the starting lineup for tonight's event. It's William Farmer on the pole, 30.772 with Josh Aaron next to him. Row number two, it's Ed Fowler and Brian Preslar. Row three, James Morris and Kayla McCarthy. The fourth row, Tyler Isley and Josh Soucy. Rounding out the top ten is Brennan Poole and Dylan Clark. Row 11, we have Jimmy Barr and Justin Dilt. If we go through the rest of the field, you see Mark Cook, Mark Sikosi, Tom Para, John Crow, Justin Cope, Alan Crowell, Paul Smarado, Briggs Swope, Billy Milner, and Nick Boyd round out the field of 22 for this race tonight. Show you your weather report as we get set to go racing. The 
Track temp at 74 degrees. Air temp is at 73. Day to night transition. Tonight is the sun currently setting here in the Windy City on the Midwest Coast. So as the field rolls off, should be some exciting racing tonight. 200 laps, and again, drivers expected to hold it wide open throughout the corners. But once the tires start to wear out, you could see some drivers lay off a little bit on the entry, then boom, right back into full throttle. Mostly it's all about two things. Number one, having the draft, and number two, which is going to be likely having the high groove because you get all the momentum on the exit of the turns leading to the straightaways where everyone will want to be drafting. Our race, con our air traffic control race director tonight, you may remember him from old school league in the ARCA series. That's Byron Bartlett. Well, race fans, once again, it's time to strap in and hold on tight because these men and women are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. National Sam Racing League style. The pace car pulls in the pit road. William Farmer and, Ed, and Josh Aaron make up the front row. And here we go. It is showtime in the windy city of Chicago. Two by two into turn one. Farmer gets a nice draft early. Fowler second. Morris makes his way up to third and they're side by side for fourth. Isley gets a run off of turn two. Looking for P4 but ahead. It's still the top three. Single file. Aaron continues to fade back a lot. Brennan Poole taking away the fifth spot. Challenge up on the outside. James Morris trying for second. But here comes Isley as lap one is in the books. Isley, the, the Daytona 300 winner, up into the third position. Then it's Brennan Poole. He's running in fourth side by side with the M&M's machine. Again, expect the drivers to hold it wide open. Look at that. Just barely letting off on board with Brennan Poole. And Fowler about to lose a spot here to the number 17 machine. Isley has made his way up to second. Fastest lap just run by Josh Susi in the number 12 with a 30.47. And he's made his way up to eighth. That's that blue, that's that red number 12 machine, a part of this blistering pack. For the lead, Isley inside of Farmer down to the bottom groove of the track, and he's got it. Your top two. Oh, there they go. Fowler already around with the 21, and we've got junk. Fowler up on his lead. Was right in second position early on. Also involved is the number eight, Mark Sikosi. And the yellow lights are on early. And Mr. Fowler will need a quick repair early here. That is not what he wants. Go to the replay for the first time tonight. It was when him and Morris got together. That's when the 21 spun it. Don't think anyone hit him. He did a 360 then kept on going. It's a wild ride. Let's see if we can watch this from an earlier perspective. And we're going to watch this from a quicker speed. It was when him and Morris got together. Crowell, I think, just missed it. And then that car behind, I think that's Smeraldo in the 57, that lifted Fowler onto its lid. Luckily, everyone misses him. We're going to watch this in real time. Pardon me, we came in late there. That was actually the 67 
of Brian Preslar that left, lifted him onto its lid. Well, why don't we why don't we ride on board with Fowler here? Probably one of the weirdest flips I have seen in a race car like that. So a couple of drivers in early on. Brian Preslar obviously with damage. Same with James Morris. Tom Parra just gained four tires and away he goes. Justin Cope suffering some damage in the 59. Billy Milner, I think it's a four tire stop for him. Actually, correction. This is a longer stop for him. 74 machine of Nick Boyd. Either his first or second start in the Army machine. Coming back out. But leading the troops early in the Windy City 300, that is Tyler Isley. Five laps are complete. Why don't we take this opportunity to listen to some uh, driver chatter. Thank you, sir. The lights are out. I believe that's the only chatter we have. And we will go green the next time by. I believe everyone's all good. Yes, they are. So I'll reset the field here for you. Tyler Isley is the race leader. He selects the outside line. Next to him, Brendan Poole in second. In row number two, we've got Jimmy Barr and William Farmer. Row three, Kayla McCarthy and Josh Soucy. Row four, Josh Aaron and Dylan Clark. And row number five, John Crow and Mark Cook. Pace car is in. Isley gets the right to fire first. He's the control car. There he goes. We're back to green at Chicagoland. And a nice restart as Brendan Poole and William Farmer side by side for second. But the draft could put Isley just a little bit too far ahead. And William is stuck out with nowhere to drive. What a push coming from Josh Susie to Brendan Poole. They are now teammates out of, I believe, the TJM Motorsports camp. Or the KTS camp. Man, I got that way wrong. And they're up there to Tyler Isley. Here's the battle for the lead as Sikosi has brought his car back down pit road. Remember, he was involved in the first yellow earlier in the race. So an issue on his head. Josh Susi staying back on Brandon Poole. Doesn't want to challenge him for a position. And now a change from fourth. Kayla McCarthy is there. The KTS drivers. One, two, three, four at the moment. In fact, McCarthy in fourth just ran her fastest lap of the day, fastest lap of the race at a 30.31 seconds. Ashton Crowder, who just came off an eye race for the E-NASCAR Coke Series at uh, Texas Motor Speedway last night working with the team. So it technically could be a one, two, three, four, five at the moment. Josh Aaron Ryan in fourth, who has been successful on super speedways in the past. Right up there in fifth, then Jimmy Barr sixth, and John Crow is seventh. Let's look at this view for the aerial shot. Could see Farmer and Cook get back up there in just a moment. There's a couple of drivers taking a risk here. That's Aaron and Row. Game by Jimmy Barr there for a position. Why don't we ride up along with the third place driver? That is Josh Susie. 
and see what a lap looks like around the Chicagoland Speedway. Going by Mark Sikosi. No issues at all. And just holding it wide open and until he gets sucked up to pool. That's when he'll let off the throttle for just a little bit. Got to be careful with that, though, because it's a 550 track. Bigger spoiler, in fact, speaking of which, uh, NASCAR announced earlier in the week, I believe they announced it yesterday, if not two days ago, the rules package for next gen at intermediates would be 550 and high downforce for intermediates and at short tracks and road courses, 650 to 675 with a lower spoiler. And that I believe is what a high spoiler would look like still on 550. Josh Susie has just lost a lot of speed. McCarthy just made a pass for third position on track and just got shuffled out to dry. Definitely not what he wants in his race early on, so he's fallen back to the sixth position, now trying to get fifth away from Barr up on the outside. But the top four currently nose to tail from Isley to Aaron. Let's continue to watch the battle for fifth position. And look at the draft. Crow gives Susie down the back stretch. And it works well. Cook and Farmer side by side off of four. They nearly touched there off the corner. So that got very close between the two drivers. Remember, Cook won, has won earlier in the year at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Remember, Mark Sikosi's on fresh retires, but track position is a lot more better than fresh tires at the moment. Won't give you as much speed. Let's go back up front and look at the battle for the race lead. Top four still remaining nose to tail. Susie just trying to get the nice toe off of the fourth place driver in Josh Aaron to get that lead back. Now it's hooked on to Aaron. It's Brett John Crow with him too. Aaron takes a look inside. I'm McCarthy. Crow goes with. Nearly slides up. There's contact. Hang on to it, Josh Aaron. What a save. With the rack and pinion steering, drivers have said in that next-gen test at the Charlotte Roma, the cars are a lot more fun to drive than they were in previous. Aaron got a little bit loose there. I think they're a lot more tougher to save now these days with the rack and pinion steering but just cost Aaron a ton of ground. Same with Crow. They are back to seventh and ninth, respectively. Farmer making the pass for eighth. Top three all teammates currently nose to tail. Isley, then Poole, then McCarthy. A couple of weeks ago when we were with you, it was a good battle to the end between McCarthy, Isley, and Susie at the Auto Club Speedway. And the top three were three wide of the line, and somehow they all got together at the end. Everyone just being patient, conservative early on this race. No one wanted to make any bold moves or aggressive moves amongst the team that could take each other out. They all worked together very well at the last intermediate track at the Auto Club Speedway. Two trains holding up right now. Second train currently led by Mark Cook in that number 88. Then Aaron Sikosi, who is a lap down. A couple laps down to be specific. And then Crow and Farmer. It's going to slow them up just a little bit. Even with a five on five with trains, it's going to remain even. So Aaron tried to get a run, but Cook, along with the draft, had the advantage. And now this is going to lose them a little bit more time. Aaron and Sikosi side by side, and again, not for position. Aaron can't clear the number eight at all off of two. You've got John Crow Sr. also in the mix up, same with William Farmer. It's a 
crazy pack right now. Aaron going below that white line. You can do that in NSRL competition to try and get some momentum throughout the trial bowl. It's a very good tactic used by a lot of drivers, and it's definitely recommended. Aaron continuing to lose the drafts. Crow gets by and takes away the seventh position. Now Farmer tries to look, and Farmer should be able to keep the draft here too up on the outside. He'll get the momentum on the exit, that's for sure. And he takes away eighth. Let's go back to 10th position where you've got Nick Boyd and Alan Crow in a nice battle there. And James Morris, who's involved in that wreck, did not need a quick repair. The lone caution of the race with Justin Dills. That's 12th and 13th. Behind them, Justin Cope, Paul Smirato. Oh, yeah. Our 14th and 15th. We heard something from Tyler Isley saying sounds good. That is Preslar in the 67 ahead of the race leader saying I'll let you guys go by. Well, working lap 24, we'll have just about 20 laps to go in a couple moments. We're gonna take you side by side here at the Chicagoland Speedway. Race leader currently is Tyler Isley. Stay with us. live coverage of the National Sim Racing League. 27 laps are in the books, and it's Tyler Isley that continues to lead on Brennan Poole, Kayla McCarthy, Josh Susi, and Jimmy Barr. Again, the KTS teammates currently one, two, three, four at the moment, and I don't know if they're trying to find a way to get rid of Jimmy Barr, but Barr you see currently in that fifth position, not making any bold passes early on. Just wanna stay there with, his, with those fellow drivers. Let's go to the inside, and Josh Susi, I think, just got a little bit tight off of corner number two. Leader coming in turn three. Yeah. Some reports off of the lap traffic from Billy Milner and Ed Okay, Fowler. where do you want to go? Not a clue. I'll tell you when I get to you. Yeah, four. Lap traffic's been a big thing early Sorry, on. They got loose. Talk, it's, that's another radio chatter from James Morris. I think there were, may have been contact with Justin Cope in that number 59. That is a battle for 12th position on the track. For those wondering about the 23, lost a lot of time to that 54, Valen Crowell, who is Pretty much checked out. The 74 have pretty much checked out, and then now it's a four man race for the position. That's actually while we were away, it's been the most racing we have actually seen during that break, the most passes that we've seen. As the 
front five and the second five were staying single file. What we saw, by the way, when Josh Aaron was losing a lot of time, the high side is the best place to go. If you want to try and make a run down to the bottom of the racetrack, you need to have some help, you need to have some friends. If you want to go to the bottom and try and make a pass, you're not going to have, you're not going to have any momentum. We saw John Crow Sr. ahead of Josh Aaron try it out, but unable but said, you know what, never mind, that's not even for a position. Crow is pretty much the le leader. When you think of it position-wise, Mark Sikosi is just ahead on fresher tires. Now, Sikosi is three laps down. First driver that is currently a lap down on the track, that is Brian Preslar on the 67. So if we were able to get a yellow, he would be the first car to get back on the lead lap. But shortly, drivers will be catching up to Billy Milner in that number 55 machine. Let us know, by the way, where you are watching from in the chat and who you are rooting for tonight. I know the KTS Motorsports team has been very fast on intermediates this season and are the favorites. Nicely opening up a little bit of a gap on Brennan Poole, but I don't know if you really want to do that. Currently dragging the brake just a little on the 19 and driving it a little bit more deeper, I think. Let's listen off the 19th perspective here. He's lifting, doesn't want to make a pass on Tyler Isley. And he is definitely lifting. At the same time, he is trying to save fuel. About 60 laps on a pit stop. So not 30 laps, correction there. Why don't we look at from the dashboard of Tyler Isley. See as well where all the drivers are on your screen. Uh, I'm gonna go low, let you go by. Isley is lifting just a little bit. Let's listen to the onboard. Is lifting just a tiny bit, but then immediately back on the throttle. That's because of the long run. He's starting to lose the tires a lot. And that's just the cause of it. Nine laps to go until stage one concludes. See Brennan Poole and Kayla McCarthy. I think they're trying some different things out if they want to go for points on the line, but at the same time, they don't want to race each other too hard, of course. But that could be the plan, lay off and then get a run on ice and then lay off once again. You see Susie and Barr losing a little bit of time. I'll show you the driver that's currently in 10th position at the moment, that is William Farmer in a battle with Alan Crowell in the 54. So Crowell has done a little bit of a good job re remaining on the 95's tail, and that is the battle for a bonus point at the end of stage one. Remember, stage one ends at lap 45. And again, we will watch that battle closely for 10. Up ahead. The number 18 trying to get a run on the inside of Sikosi. Not Again, not for position. Zakosi has fresher tires and a bunch of the other drivers on track. Oh my goodness, what a nice clear from Crow to shut the door on the eight. Zakosi had a lot of momentum and it cuts off the air on Zakosi. Six laps to go at the line. Zakosi trying to fight back. Back over to the 10th spot and Crowell trying the inside on the 95 for 10th spot. Outside line seems to be the momentum in turns one and two. The 95 makes it stick. Now he's gonna try and get a nice draft off of that 74, that is Nick Boyd, who has made his way up in the ninth and he's closing in big time on the drivers from 
six through nine. Now remember Nick Boyd in that number 74, he's already made a pit stop. And let's see if we can compare the lap times to the driver ahead of him. There you see it right there. So Boyd has been closing in on eighth spot Crow the last few laps. Going back over to that 10th position. And again, continuing on, a good battle. Five to go, now four to go in stage number one. Again, this is from Farmers On Board as lights have come on at the Windy City of Chicagoland Speedway. Crowell dives it in deep just a little bit. He's trying to get a lot of momentum, and he's got the run on the exit. Farmer got tight there in the center of one and two, which opened the door for the 95 of, which opened the door for the 54 of Crow to try and go by that 95 of Farmer. And again, he uses that bank gain and 10th position is his for right now. Let's go back over to the top five where again, they are not racing each other, but they are coming to the lap cars of Ed Fowler and Billy Milner. Now this is what Brian Preslar does not want to see in that 67. He wants to make sure Billy Milner stays in front of the leaders, but the leaders are pounding right on him. Billy Milner no, would not even care less because next car, Dylan Clark, is a long ways away where he will not get lapped at the end of stage one. Billy Milner, stay low. They're saying to stay low. So leaders will go high. That should not be a factor at all. So off of turn number four, final lap is underway. See if anyone's gonna make some aggressive moves. The pits are closed, by the way, after the ending of the stage. Isley just getting a nice draft off of Ed Fowler. Fowler stay keeps yeah. on the bottom. And should not be an issue at all. Here they come off a of turn four. Your Daytona 300 winner, Tyler Isley, will take the stage one win here at Chicagoland Speedway. So he gets it. Let's go back to 10th position. Alan Crowell has gotten by the 95 of William Farmer. And Crowell takes the stage one win at the caution. So Tyler Isley. Win stage number one. Who wants NCAA football back? And I agree with them a lot. We'll pause here, take a break, stay with us. When we come back, it will be pit stops. is open and pretty much everybody is coming into pit road you will see the stop the stop times on the bottom of your screen for the leaders everyone likely doing four tires and Sunoco fuel drivers do get a limited sets of tires Isley comes out ahead of Kayla McCarthy and ahead of Brennan Poole the battle for second gonna be very close and it goes to McCarthy on Brennan Poole then fourth is Mark Cook. Fifth is John Crow Sr. Jimmy Barr loses about three spots on Pitt Road, who is back in seventh spot. 
Gravel eighth, Farmer ninth, and Billy Milner coming out in, excuse me, James Morris, correction, coming out in 10 spots. So Tyler Isley remains in the lead. We'll continue to step aside. We'll recap pit stops in just a moment. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Welcome you back to the Chicagoland Speedway here in Joliet, Illinois. Two laps to go until we go back to the green flag. Tyler Isley was your stage one winner as we get set for about a 40 lap stage two from what I would expect. Make sure you take this opportunity to like the, pow like the National Sim Racing League Facebook page and also follow the live stream page on twitch.tv slash Mario Sakala. Got a couple of viewers in here. BDE Young Racing says the broadcasts are awesome. Love the overlays and commercials. Feels like a real NASCAR Sunday. Appreciate your support as always, man. Hit that follow button. Broadcasting every Thursday and Monday. Thursday nights we've got the Powerhouse Racing League. And then Mondays uh, we broadcast the uh, Coast to Coast Racing League. Uh, for Monday Night Madness with uh, 360 Outlaw Sprint Cars. which is always a lot of fun. Monday will be at the Kokomo Speedway. And tomorrow, the Powerhouse Racing League. Let's take a look at their schedule on where we are tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we are at the Pocono Raceway. 90 laps there. That's always a fun one. Last, uh, last season was a crazy race there at um, Pocono. A lot of... Uh, fuel saving to the end and it was uh, Kayla McCarthy who got the win uh, in when we were racing the trucks so we get set to go back to green it will be a 40 lap stage here's how the field will reset Isley selects the outside lane as we come back Kayla McCarthy second row two is Brendan Poole and Mark Cook row number three that is John Crow and Nick Boyd, the fourth row. You'll see Jimmy Barr and, um, excuse me, Jimmy Barr and I believe Jimmy Barr is confirming an Alan Crowell in rounds the top 10, James Morris and William Farmer. Isley selects the top side of the shelf while we take this opportunity to go back to green. Crank it up for you here in Chicago. Definitely seemed like a more scattered start than all the previous restarts we have had in the race, and it's getting racy for the race lead. Brennan Poole on the outside, three wide behind them, and here comes Nick Boyd in the 74. The Army is going strong early on here. From the back to the front, Nick Boyd started in 22nd position, and he is up to fourth. That was a scattered restart that we saw early on. However, though, the pack then started to rebound up to two by two, and Brennan Poole leads Tyler Isley. The high groove starting to come into play. McCarthy with the draft in third, and now Nick Boyd gets it in fourth. 
And now Mark Cook could be the man out to drive, maybe even John Crow as they battle for position. Isley wants the lead back from Brennan Poole to the inside. The Daytona 300 winner takes it to the race lead. And my goodness, this pack is getting extremely crazy. You've got Mark Cook in here. You've got John Crow, Nick Boyd. How about Jimmy Barr, William Farmer, who lost out on a stage point. This is getting exciting for now, that is for sure. That is, that is a 12 car pack. The driver that lost the most in the pits is that red machine, the number 12 of Josh Susi, again losing time. He is back in the ninth position, nowhere near his teammates at all. There is a wall of drivers he's gotta get by. Look out, McCarthy going down into the apron and they're three wide position. That is a battle for second, and they're asking for a wreck. Mark Cook got a little bit wobbly in the entrance of one. Cut off Justin Cope there for a split second. Isley still holding on. John Crow, the highest spot we've seen him today. He likes to race. He doesn't like to take any prisoners at all. Highest spot that Crow's been in today. That is second position. And again, I tell you, they're racing like it's Daytona, like it's Talladega. Wide open thanks to that 550 horsepower. Crow coming off of a second place finish last week at Myrtle Beach. Not even leading a single lap. Three seconds behind the race winner of Mark Sikosi. High sagging the best way around with the teammates of Isley and Poole, then Nick Boyd up there. Same with the M&M's machine of James Morris. If we see this pack later on in the race, we could possibly see a little bit of side drafting. Side drafting though is gonna be tough to do in the next gen machines. We'll see what happens. And look at that 17 of Isley. Switched lanes and shut the bottom groove down on John Crow. Now that accordion's the top side a little bit. And look at this, Nick Boyd's about to be the man out to dry. Three wide, stuck top shelf, now finds a lane. Finds a spot back in the high groove. But this racing's getting intense. Now that high groove's starting to turn into possibly single file. Now Brennan Poole slingshots his way to the inside of John Crow Jr. Icely goes with him. The teammates, one, two. But Crow wants it back. You know him for sure. The Crow is stalking his prey. Kakine at Brennan Poole. Josh Susi, after being back around ninth and 10th, he's found his way back up to fourth. Susi in that number 12 machine this season. He's had a great year so far. Three wins in the Speed Demon setup to number 12, currently in fourth. Kayla McCarthy has found her way back in fifth. And, uh, it's, uh, and now the KTS drivers, one, two, four, five. Now they're just gonna have to figure out how they get John Crow Sr. out of here. Everyone now back to a single file line. No one really getting very aggressive. Brennan Poole, I think I may have saw and seen him clip the wall for just a moment. I'm not too sure though. They've been trying to bump draft. With this driver. Oh, look out! Drivers are loose, and there they go! Crow's in the wall! Nice save from him! That got very close for the driver yeah, of the number 18. And him and Susie have discussions. Oh boy. That got very, very close. Let's see if we can find a replay for you on what happened. This is on board. You see they got in the quarter panels. But man, oh man, very close to leading to the big one and a great drive from John Crow. 
He's fallen back though to 16th position. One of the bottom cars on the lead lap. So now just like we saw in stage one on that long run, starting to turn into two different packs. You've got this one led again by Tyler Isley. Mark Cook, Nick Boyd going to work for sixth spot. Nick Boyd started from the rear and has made his way up to the front. The U.S. Army would be its best, definitely proud. And then Josh oh, Susi, who had to let off because of the situation with John Crow, has fallen back to ninth and may lose that as well to William Farmer. Appreciate it. That is from Cope back to Crowell and as well. If we go green to the end of stage number two, that will be the battle to keep your eyes on. The lone man out of this pack, if that remains the same, will not get a stage point. And currently that lone man is Susie who has fallen back into the 11th spot. Inside 23. Let's look behind them. You got Josh Aaron, Briggs Swope, Tom Pear up there in 14th. You got Briggs Swope, Billy Milner up here with Paul Smeraldo and Justin Dilt. I think they're all playing it safer right now. Don't want to get into any huge wrecks at the moment. John Crow, by the way, the last car on the lead lap with that right side damage. And if he goes a lap down, that again is not what Brian Preslar wants. Went a lap down after Billy Milner. Went a lap down and Preslar did not receive the free pass. So top three now, all teammates. Morris back and forth. He likes to get aggressive in these races. And then Jimmy Barr continues to run with this lead pack currently in the fifth position. Right on board here with James with uh, the rear bumper of Kayla McCarthy. Show you what she sees in a rear view mirror. Let's watch and see what Morris does. Morris drives it in a lot deep this time to the inside for the position. But Morris just doesn't have that drive off on the exit compared to Kayla. And you see that a lot from Morris. Jimmy Barr thinking about trying something out but not doing anything. I think those drivers are just going to stay patient because we're pretty much we're pretty much just halfway through stage number two. Jimmy Barr trying to make some moves. Man, Cook and Boyd continue to go side by side for sixth position from time to time, but Cook is just cutting the air off of Nick Boyd. And now they're staying in a CSX train for right now and they got lap traffic ahead. And my question is, is that Crow? That is not. Let's check the map here and see who it is. That is the 67 of Kreslar. Now that would put him. Kreslar, stay low, man. Appreciate it. That put him two laps down. Been a rough race for him, was involved in that first yellow after uh, the contact with the number um, 05 of Ed Fowler early in the race. 20 laps to go in stage number two. Tyler Isley continues to lead. And we'll take this opportunity once again to keep you side by side here from the Chicagoland Speedway.
Welcome back to the Chicagoland Speedway. And yes, that is a live picture of your new race leader. That is Brennan Poole. Tyler Isley, if you're wondering where he is, just had a very close call on the track. Let's look at a replay and see what happened. As you see from the onboard of Isley, looks like he just gets loose. Let's show you what Thanks happened here. See what happened here in slow-mo. He was loose and Brennan Poole goes up to just miss. And in the grass, falls back a couple of spots. Hey Nick, just so you know, I get a little loose when you get semi like uh, spoiler, so try to not do too much like that. What? And there's a warning. What? What? I'm to hit you, Kayla. There's a warning that comes from You're good. that goes to Nick Boyd, letting him know I get I'll loose when you up in the corner, so you run him down. When you get that close to the spoiler, so. This now leads to a good battle for second as the pack has pretty much gone apart. And that's your best battle on track. That's for second position between Kayla McCarthy and James Morris as they go by John Crow Sr. Again, Crow will get that nice save and this is going to help as well. Morris on the outside. That may be where he wants to go for the position on Kayla McCarthy. Let's see here what happens off the corner. Morris is gonna get that drive off this time compared to Kayla, and P2 is his. Superman's coming by. So a good pass from the 21 from Morris, highest spot he's been in, in the race so far. Looking inside, 16. But this is a battle on the track between second and third. McCarthy takes P2 back with a nice side draft off of the 21. Got a win a couple weeks ago at the Auto Club Speedway. It's a statement win for her. Nearly won the Daytona 300. So she is glad that she was able to get that back. Now she's closing down Brennan Poole because those two are working it with each other. But I think that Poole was just going to lay, or McCarthy, I should say, lay back on Brennan Poole and not take a big risk in the battle for the race lead. Isley and Boyd continue to do get it. That's for fourth position. Let's find another good Looking battle inside. on the track. Josh Susi, William Farmer, Alan Crowell. Now that is for... Now these drivers here led by Justin Cope. That is seven through 10. 10 to go in stage number two. And Crowell's got the final spot. 5.6 seconds ahead of Billy Milner. Milner's been doing well after receiving the free pass. Has made his way up into 11. Now he's back to 12th after Josh Aaron makes the pass stick. So side by side, the drivers not side drafting each other hard. The it's completely early in the race, not to take any big moves, big risks. Not really too many slide jobs going on here. We've got nine to go in the stage. And McCarthy and Poole are gonna go to work side by side for the lead. Here comes the Queen of Texas. As McCarthy Goes to the point on Brennan Poole, looking to lead her first lap of the day, and she's got it over the Cup Series driver. Brennan Poole actually has yet to win a race this season in the National Sim Racing League. Had a good race with Ashton Crowder in the final laps of that of their race at North Wilkesboro and Crowder taking the win and that got close between Poole and Sakosi to get Sakosi on fresher tires four laps down. Sakosi's strategy has definitely backfired on him. I think he was hoping for cautions, breeding cautions, but it has gone the completely opposite way. We have seen a long run in stage one and right now caution free in stage number two. Some close calls though 
That could have helped Delta Driver of the number eight year winner from last week. And Poole's actually fallen back to third. Morris using the draft off of Sakosi to take second. Oh, look out, Boyd's on the wall. Nick Boyd just scraped the wall in the 74 and he's got some paint damage. So loses a little bit of time, but Boyd's still running in the fifth position. Five seconds though ahead of Mark Cook. So not a huge issue right now, but that could be some optional damage. He may have to repair when we have pit stops at the end of stage number two in the Army machine. So we'll just have to wait and see, but we've got a battle for the lead. Here comes Morris on the outside, but McCarthy gets a nice, some nice help from Brennan Poole, and hello, Tyler Isley. Welcome back after getting loose off turn two and in the grass, he has come into this equation. Four car blanket for the lead. We could go three wide off the corner, no. But they got really close. Oh, contact between the KTS drivers. Isley and Poole use the apron. Three wide for the top spot into turn one. Poole backs out of it first. Morris with no help on the top side somehow takes the lead. But still McCarthy trying to fight back. And it's three to go at the line in stage number two. Staying right here. McCarthy says she's staying right here. Letting Brennan and Tyler know. And Morris, even with no drafting help, still using the top side. It's helping him out just a little bit on the exit. Let's watch the exit closely as, ooh, McCarthy washed up in the entry of three and four. Morris could clear off the turn, but he can't. And McCarthy gets it at the line. Watch closely though. As we've got two to go, pits are close. Watch closely though. If your KTS drivers use the apron at the start finish line. McCarthy has Morris cleared. That was close. And a close call we're hearing between Josh Susi. I thought. I didn't think he was that close for a moment. And Justin Cope. Final lap underway in stage number two. And it's a good one. Morris and Poole side drafting for a second spot. I don't think Morris is going to get the run. Into three and four. Lap traffic ahead. Well, that's going to be hard racing to the line, and it's Kayla McCarthy taking the stage to win, and it's Poole over Morris for second. What a what a race there at the end. Grabbing 10th is going to be William Farmer, but the stage two winner, Kayla McCarthy in the number 24. We'll step aside for another break, and when we come back, we'll have green flag pit stops. So stay with us at Chicagoland.
road is open and everybody is pitting in. You'll see the pit stops come up on the bottom of your screen. Addition to your top five should be a four tire stop. A caution free stage two, even with a lot of close calls. So give props to all the drivers there. Keeping it going. Look at Brennan Poole in the race off pit road. A slow stop for Kayla McCarthy. And she's still in the pits. Brennan Poole, Nick Boyd, James Morris, Tyler Isley, Mark Cook. And now Kayla comes out. Oh my goodness, she is back in 11th. What a disastrous stop for the driver of the number 24. And we'll try to recap everything with pit stops in just a moment. But Brennan Poole leading at Chicago Land Speedway. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. back here at Chicagoland Speedway. It's the Windy City 300. There you see your top five on the screen and we'll show your entire top five here for you. There you see him. Give you the fastest pit stop here and that went to a 14.63 second stop. Except by Tyler Ice the quickest on pit road though. We have a 41.25 by William Farmer who's made his way up to fifth position. Next week, the National Sim Racing League takes you to the Kentucky Speedway for the Bluegrass 250. 167 laps right here on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page and twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. Real quick before we go back to the green flag, we're going to take a look and see what happened to Kayla McCarthy on her stop? So we'll go right to a replay here. And I can't even, t she didn't even overshoot her box though. I'll take this to you in real time though. Either she had optional, which I doubt she had, or she's trying to use that tank to the full to try and go one stop to everyone else's maybe two. But I think this race is going to be one stop the rest of the way, so that is a very slow stop for Kayla McCarthy. So ready to go back to green. Brennan Poole selects the inside with James Morris in row one. Tyler Isley and Mark Cook in row number two. Justin Cope, William Farmer, row three. Alan Crowell, Billy Milner, row four. Josh Aaron. Kayla McCarthy, row number five. Pace car is in, and Brennan Poole will bring the field back down to the green. Fires later than the other drivers, but here we go. Top two. Stay nose to tail. William Farmer up to fourth, third, takes it away from James Morris. Side by side behind with Cook and Aaron and Crowell is back up there. Highest spot I believe he's been in today in fifth position. A couple of drivers washes up the track. Look at Josh Aaron. Wicked tight in turns three and four. But that's a big pack. They're keeping on going. Led by Mark Cook. And they're about to get a huge run on the top four. They're a nose to tail. And you know a guy like James Morris. I want to make some moves big time. 
Looks like the Stains single file out. Morris thought about making a move. Does he try the inside? Yes, but Farmer cuts off the draft. But man, oh my goodness, Brick Swope just got close into banging doors with Dylan Clark in that number 34. It's getting good. We just had a change for fourth. Mark Cook just ran the fastest lap of the race at a 30.17. Clears Morris, and he wants more. He goes for third on Farmer. He's got some help. Kayla McCarthy trying to rebound up to the sixth position after that bad pit stop. And she's got some help coming from Josh Aaron in that 77. Makes the pass work. Now can she make her way up to the leaders? Mark Cook still wants some help. Look at McCarthy right behind him. She Again, she's still going on the attack. Wants to be up there with the KDS teammates. Off of four, nothing. Look out, Alan Crowell losing the spot to Josh Susi, who was trying to rebound. He still has that right side damage from being involved in that close call with John Crow. Still making his way up, currently in eighth position. And the battle's still heating up. McCarthy wants the spot, but Morris and Cook work together. And McCarthy falls back to six. Where did Aaron go? There he is up top in the DraftKings 77. Back into the ninth position. And now the top seven, currently nose to tail, single file. Cross flags are up. 100 in the books, 100 to go. McCarthy still trying everything she can. And McCarthy may even lose a spot here to Justin Cope, but she's going to get some help. Maybe a bump draft from Josh Hughes. He nearly got her loose. Keeps it going. In fact, Josh Susi now. Fastest lap of the day at a 30 even. Inside, three wide, inside, three wide. Oh boy, three wide. Milner sent it in, they're three wide behind him. Look at Tom Paris sent it in in 14. My goodness, I thought the lead pack was the craziest pack. This may be the craziest pack. And what on earth happened to Nick Par Nick, Nick Boyd, excuse me. He was right inside the top five and then just fell back big time. Oh, look out, Paul Smirata loose. Had some oversteer in one and two. Keeps the car going. Let's go up to the front though. Josh Susi making a move on James Morris. Two by two in front of the front three. And now William Farmer using the apron as a cutoff. Nearly got into Susi. Oh boy, Farmer cooks at the wall. A lot of drivers, accordion back, try to miss the number 88. And him and Morris really touch, Mark there goes Cook. Into the wall, trying to get that car into pit road, but has fallen way off the pace. That's a scary place to be if you're the 88. You don't want to be on the middle side of the racetrack. The Paxton had to split him into a sandwich. Not what Cook wanted at all. So now we've got a scattered pack here. The, the top seven have gone have opened up a little bit of a bunch of gaps on each other. But now your top four, guess what? KTS Motorsports. Best battles right here for fifth. Let's watch this between Justin Cope and William Farmer. Josh Aaron also in the mix as Farmer got loose there in the center of three and four. Aaron gets the gap opened up and the number 77 takes away P6. Started in 10th, he's up to 6th. Justin Cope 
from 17th to 5th. Right now, he's currently your biggest mover of the race so far. Inside 54, inside 54. We got a driver in the pits, and that is Mark Cook. We're going to watch his stop. Oh, he, I think he's towing that machine. He has. I think the engine blew off of that race car. And Mark Cook's night may have just come to an end. And yes, it has. He has towed the machine. The war wagon's gone. He's done. Top three currently. Your KDS drivers, Susie in fourth, also that KDS driver. Trying to make his way back up. Let's go back and watch Cope and Aaron. Both of those very well at super speedways. I know this is an intermediate track, but this is, this is the action field of super speedway. Look out, Justin Cope. Bobble there in one and two. Look at Aaron. Had to make a huge emergency move down to the inside, and this could be a slide job up to the top shelf. And it's not. And that puts William Farmer as well into the sixth spot. Billy, I'm gonna let you have the inside. Go inside. Ten four. This pack Thank is you. this pack is still getting crazy with James Morris and Billy Milner. Killed my right side of the car. Yeah, ten four. That was off the contact with Mark Cook when he doored him after Cook started getting loose. And that's as well a tough break for Morris. I think he would like to see a yellow fly right now. So 90 laps to go here in Chicagoland. We're continuing to watch this pack. Nick Boyd has made his way up to eighth. And this is a nice pack. This may be the biggest pack right now. Inside, they... 34, inside. I'll tell you this, if Milner stops saying inside and this pack decides, you know what, it's time to work together they could find a way to get up because the bigger the draft line you have, that's the better chance, that's the more faster you can get and have a better chance of making your way up towards the front. Because the next pack ahead of Boyd is just two drivers, actually technically three drivers if Sikosi gets into the middle of it. There's Cope, there's Farmer, actually now it's three. Thought it was Sikosi for a moment. But let's see if they can try and make work their way together while the top four Here's teammates work. have opened up a nice gap on Aaron. Alan Crowell currently in 12th spot. Trying to get a run down to the bottom, but he can't. And Milner up to 11th position. 17 cars currently on the lead lap. First one a lap down is Jimmy Barr. He could be the free pass if we get a yellow. As the top three continue to work together, turn up that volume, time to crank it up. Let me tell you something. McCarthy had a huge run on Isley, was possibly looking at the second position, 
but did not take advantage of it though. Susie has drafted his way up. Until you're outside, 24. With the top three. Huh? I'm still, I'm still to the outside of the car and inside of me. Maybe that's 74, my bad. I looked to my outside, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, Kayla. We apologize yeah, for Kayla, that language. <laughs> TMI there, Kayla. I don't think we need to hear that for a while, but continuing on. Now this pack here, they have, they have now bunched down to single file. They're trying to get up to that next three. It's Dylan Clark leading this pack, and up ahead is William Farmer, Josh Aaron, and Justin Cope. see what happens there. Aaron trying to make a run on the outside of that 59 for fifth position. Many close battles on track. If, if you were using our the same live timing as I am, which is SDK, you can see the intervals are in the red. I mean, there's going to bounce. Oh, look out, Cope, there he goes. Around goes the 59, and it brings the yellow out. Cope just simply lost it by himself. And it brings out the fourth caution of the race. Keeps the car going, decides I'm going to drive it back. You saw it live. He was going for, oh, he got loose off four. Aaron takes advantage of it. Tries to overcorrect right in front of the 95. Oh man, it's right on board with Cope. And then we gotta watch William Farmer here. Watch this. Woo, let off at the perfect time. If he goes on the gas, he's plowing right into him. So fourth caution of the race. And Brennan Poole continues to lead. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll have pit stops. Stay with us. Actually, you know what? We're going to keep it here with you. Pit road is open for all drivers. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Because this will put us, this will still have us in a one-stop race not hit the window yet of that 60 lap so drivers could pit at lap 180 what I would guess and go right to the end so you're watching your leader Brennan Poole here in the pits we'll have to see if anyone comes out ahead specifically Kayla McCarthy no Poole gets out and that should give him the race off of the pits and it does. Poole, McCarthy, then Isley, Farmer, Dylan Clark out to fifth, Aaron, Nick Boyd, Billy Milner, Alan Crowell, and Briggs Swope. Yellow flag flies. Brennan Poole continues to lead. We'll step aside. We will be right back.
Welcome back to Chicagoland Speedway. The lights are out. We go under the green flag next time by. Take this opportunity to give shout outs to some special sponsors here. Outsider Racing Wrap, Speed Demon Setups, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Elevated Outdoors, and Butt Kicker. Oh, excuse me. I have just been informed uh, Speed Demon Graphics. Did not get the memo there. So we will update that for you um, for next week. So we'll have about 76 laps to go on this restart. McCarthy and Poole make up row number one. Poole selects the outside line, then Tyler Isley, William Farmer, row two, Dylan Clark, Nick Boyd, row three, Billy Milner, Alan Crowell, row four, and Josh Susie, Greg Swope, row five, and Susie did not have a good stop, nor did he have a good restart there, because the 54 spun the tires and is continuing to shove him. Yeah, I missed one. Ah, that's the report he missed the gear. Paul Sperato loose off of turn two. Fading back a little bit. Looking up front though. Quo McCarthy and Isley. Still your top three. Looking Let's inside, 34, inside. Barely just saying, you don't have to look, you don't have to say inside every time. These guys have spotters for a reason. Clark trying the outside. I should say Milner trying the inside in a battle for the sixth position, but Briggs Wolt may have something to say about it. Haven't talked about him yet today. Tries to go three wide. Off a of turn four, the 34 shuts the door, but here comes Susie once again. Oh boy, I thought Dylan Clark was about to lose control of that machine for just a moment. About ahead of them, Nick Boyd, William Farmer, battle is on for fourth. A 74, looking to the inside. Now I'll tell you this, I'd rather be Army, I'd rather be Army strong than drinking mud root beers. Thanks, Farmer. Oh, you want? Looks like reports of three wide. I think Nick Boyd just let Will. No problem. Just trying to keep it clean, right? I think William Farmer just said he let Nick Boyd go by. No, wait. Fuck, you guys are faster. <laughs> yeah, just trying to keep it clean. Ooh, nice one. Yep, yep. Gonna be some damn good racing for right now, that's for sure. Here comes Susie down low on Clark. As they continue to go down the back straight away. Milner looking on Clark. Good battle happening for seven. Intense racing mid pack. Now Susie trying to get out of it in six and get up to his teammates. That's going to be tough, though. Milner using the apron as a runoff. Now trying to side draft again. Morris, after getting into it with the 88, has made his way back up to eighth position. Now looking at Clark. Swope nearly gets the wall in one and two. Army in three and four, a couple of drivers signing their best laps of the day. How about your top two? Brennan Poole and Kayla McCarthy working together. 30.2 for Poole, 30.19 for Kayla McCarthy. Some good laps for them. Now let's see what Josh Susie does here on William Farmer in the battle for fifth. Working with Dylan Clark and James Morris. You know Morris, he's, you know, with all the m and sponsorship, it's got a lot of sugar on it, so he's got that sugar rush right now trying to make his way up to the front. A couple of 
the drivers with some tactics right now. You try to fake high, you try to fake low, and go the other way, or you actually go for it? That's the big question. From fourth to fifth, wow. Over three seconds apart, and oh boy, Susie, oh boy. Farmer had to get up to the high side or else he was getting turns. Very close for the driver of the 95 as Dylan Clark goes by. Morris makes the pass stick for seventh and now here comes Milner. Comes on up, nearly got into the 54 of Crowell and this opens the door for Josh Aaron and even Mark Sikosi. If I got my notes correctly, should a yellow fly, Sikosi would receive the free pass even though he's two laps down. Behind, you've got Justin Dilts, Briggs Swope. For those wondering where Justin Cope is, after he spun, used his quick repair currently in 14th with John Crow. Actually, you know what? He may not have used his quick repair, just repair damage with the pace him and Crow are going. I would expect Crow, I don't think he's used his quick repair yet today, but I expect him to use it at some point. Nick Boyd, by the way, how about this? He has made his way up with the top three. I think he's gonna play safe, nearly got into the back of Isley. And a completely different lanes is not what you want. Meanwhile, with this train from five back to 10, this is the bigger train, so this, they could be going faster. We'll compare this time by. Getting a little bit tight, but I think Clark is trying to get the drivers behind him to work together to make their way up to the front. We'll see how it looks here at the start finish line. Aaron backs out for just a little bit. Let's compare the lap times here. Closing in just a little bit per lap. A couple of laps ago, they were a half second compared to the 74 of Boyd. So we will see how that turns out. And this is good racing right now. Aaron all the way up on the outside with the 21 of Boris. Is that Sikosi up there? Yes, it is, working with Susie. Two more yellows is what he would love to see, and then Sikosi is back in the race. Oh, boy. Clark shuts the door on the 21. And we've got a tandem party. Clark goes up the track, cuts off the 77. Now Morris with no drafting partner at all. Clark cuts back down, opens the door for Aaron. The battle continues for the top five spot. And they continue to lose some time. There still may be Boyd is a half second fast correction there. My goodness, the top four have just pulled away with a huge, huge run. Let's see here who this is that Brennan Poole is catching up to. That is Jimmy Barr in the 81 who goes to the outside. Now Barr was working with the leaders earlier on in the race and then suffered damage of some sort of way. Farmer just said something on the radio, may have had to do with Billy Milner. Oh boy, Milner and Farmer. 
No room for error at all at this moment. Nearly getting together. Morris and Susie working with Sakosi. Try to get back up there with Clark and Aaron. Five drivers working together over four. It's still the shorthanded advantage. Barr, by the way, because of the setup he has, he's trying to work together with your top four and stay on the lead lap, but with that rear end damage, it's not gonna go for that long. Top three off the KDS team. Trying to work together again, not taking any bull risk to make passes. Long way left to go, under 60 left. Let's go back, Dylan Clark side by side with Josh Aaron for fifth, oh boy. Aaron almost got the wall in turn three and four. I think he just got a tiny bit loose on the exit, side drafts off of Clark and keeps fifth. Oh boy, Morris and Clark, I think they may have touched. They got off the throttle, and Susie goes bye, bye, bye. Now here comes Farmer and Milner. Farmer takes a look, and now the leader pets. Brennan Poole is in the pits. By the way, we are in the window of going all the way to the end, and I think that is the plan. Let's be out here as long as possible here, Josh. And I think that's the plan for Brennan Poole right now. He's, he's hoping for a caution-free. Appreciate the push, Mark. He's hoping for a caution-free hey, race. Hey, Ryan, tell him uh, I'm going to stay out here as long as possible. You, you too. I mean, I don't know what your strategy is here. To go to the end, and guess what? That's a fuel-only stop and maybe two tires only for the driver of the number 19. And he's gone. So he just went a lap down, and he is the free pass car as we speak. So now this puts McCarthy out in the lead, Isley second, Nick Boyd third, and then that's the battle for fourth. Even as they're trying to work together. Look at the gap this time. A tenth and a half faster. Sakosi signaled to Aaron that I'm just trying to work know, with you. Not able to run the middle, but lose the time running the wall. I can't. I'm not holding tires too. Susie says lose time the road. Oh, look out, Sakosi in the wall. Stacks everyone up. And now the battle is on for fifth. Clark, Nip, yeah, Susie. Go on, I gotta run top. John Crow, you just served there in the oh, 18. Fine. I dropped it down to 170 down the straightaway. Comes in for what could be his final stop in the race. See where he fares. He's gonna get passed here by Brennan Poole, obviously. goes out four tires and fuel Josh Aaron put up a little bit of a gap on Dylan Clark and Josh Susie we can get him out throw is right now look at Susie oh man he left to the rear wheels off of Dylan Clark in that battle And it's a good one right now. 50 laps to go, just under, just about 50 laps to go. Kayla McCarthy continues to lead. We're gonna take this opportunity once again and we're taking you side by side.
You're watching some great action happening for fourth position. Josh Susi, Josh Aaron, James Morris, Dylan Clark. Incredible battles. We welcome you back to live coverage of the Windy City 300 for the National Sim Racing League. Just about 45 laps to go here. And we've seen the pit window open up for the final stops of the race. A couple of drivers have come in. The most noticeable one is Brennan Poole, who is currently the last car on the lead lap. Sorry, Mark. Now, if the yellow comes out, this Good. will still work in Poole's favor because he is the first driver that is a lap down. So he would get the lucky dog. However, though, the only disadvantage for him, though, is that he would restart at the tail end. But Brennan Poole, he knows how to make his way up sorry, to the field easily. Sorry, I didn't easily. mean to block you. I just got that tight. I'm sorry. They see Justin Cope up there in the 59 with his peers that he was in before he spun out. Working their way by the lap car of Jimmy Barr at the moment. And we got a battle for position. Fifth spot on the line, James Morris, Josh Aaron nearly getting together, trying to side draft as hard as they can. Aaron trying to get the edge off of the 21. All this happening right behind Josh Lucy on board with him. James Morris all over him for position. And Josh Aaron losing a little bit of time. Nick Boyd into the pits. He goes for his final stop of the race. All about strategy from here on out. Right sides are up for the 74. I think possibly the strategy could be a pit later, put in less hey, fuel. Bar, number 81, I am pitting this time. And go to the end, four tires and fuel. I'm be slow on the bottom of turns three and four. Four tires and fuel for the 74. And four. We're expecting the 95 of William Farmer in this time with 40 I laps to go. Caleb to get up there, hit the wall and off the road. You're good, man. Watching his speed as he comes in. It's good. And we'll watch Farmer's pit stop. In the mug group beer number 95, McCarthy continues to lead. Isley second. Josh Susi is third, but he's about 13 seconds back on Tyler Isley. Just about half a track. Good work here, James. Farmer with pit stall number one for being on the pole position. Yeah, man, trying to get, trying to move us forward, brother. Brennan Poole continues to be the first car that is a lap down. Unknown if he put himself back on the lee lap for tires and fuel. So Farmer back out onto the track. As now it is McCarthy and Isley, the top two, working together. I would expect them to come in together for the final stop of the race. That could determine who wins, unless we get a yellow. A yellow would absolutely change everything as they're working their way by, I believe that's Preslar and then John Crow. The first car now, a lap down. That may actually, correction, that is Paul Smeraldo in the 57. Where's Brennan Poole? There he is, a couple of seconds behind, three seconds from behind. So we're going to have to watch that closely because that is for the lucky dog spot. And Brennan Poole does not want to be behind Paul Smeraldo should the yellow flag come out.
but we will see what happens here. Almost done here, wrapping up the final race, final laps here at Chicagoland Speedway next week. We go to the Kentucky Speedway. That should be a fun one, 167 laps, and it always puts on a great show, so stay tuned here for more updates. Let's go to the battle for third between Josh Susi and James Morris. Morris always like to take no prisoners. Milner. Yeah, or, or, yeah, 16. Petting, I'm petting. 23 is petting. 23 is petting this time. That is Justin Delt in sixth spot. It's done a good job rebounding, I believe. But the way he's rebounded, he has used his quick repair. So we're going to watch him as he comes on in. 57 petting. And Paul Smirado is going to pet this time. So... We'll watch Smeraldo as he enters the pits. Let's Brennan Poole know he's going to pit this time. And there goes Poole by. So Poole back to being the first car a lap down. Again, the strategy is going to be all about pitting as late as possible. Pitting this time, pitting this time. And try and put less fuel in. Kayla Thank McCarthy. God. And Tyler Isley going to pit, pit the this time. time. Uh, Everyone's going to pit for their final <laughs> stop of the race. And your top two coming all about the entry. I'm pitting, 12. I'm pitting. I'm pitting, Mark. I'm pitting. Down at 55 miles an hour. Hey, uh, Brian, uh, 67, 81, and 54. I'm coming by you here on the high side. It's going to determine who wins the race. Now remember, Brennan Poole is going to have the horsepower advantage. Josh Susi is also in the pits. Equal on the right. We'll see who gets off the jack first. Oh, it's getting close right now. Who's getting around for the lefts? Oh, Isley got on the lefts first. But it could be that one pit stall advantage. This is going to be close on the exit. It's Kayla McCarthy, but guess who got ahead of them? Brennan Poole cycles through as the provisional leader. I guess who also cycled ahead? Nick Boyd. So track position could be better than tires at the end. Pitting early may have been your best friend, but remember, McCarthy Isley are in the draft. The other drivers are not. Justin Cope back in the pits. Oh, man, that's a tough break. He had a good run going in this 59 machine. So now your race leader is Briggs Swope. Seven second lead on Alan Crowell. Cope exiting pit road. Pressler also exiting. So top four, as you see on the track, have yet to pit. And Brennan Poole is on the lead lap. McCarthy. <laughs> We lost her on the radio for just a moment. Bro letting Brennan Poole go by on the outside. Brennan Poole looking for what would be his first win of the season in the National Sim Racing League. See you guys in about five laps. Boyd says, see you guys in about five laps. That is interesting. Boyd would be originally second. Oh, yeah, I did it. 10 4, just make sure. Morris wondering if Farmer has pitted. Currently, their delta is half a second. Get that far out of the way, you can see Farmer. There he is, at 95. Morris with seven lap pressure tires and closing big time. Now the thing here though with Nick Boyd, let's go back over here and he's working with the 67 of Preslaw. Let's compare the lap times. Poole is about a half second slower. Now Nick Boyd at the moment Thomas, have you pitted yet? has 15 no. laps of pressure tires. Poole opened up no. the window to try and use the fresher tires either. early on in a run. How much fuel you got left, Greg? I can go probably about, wow, 
got 17 left. Great. Drivers wondering about f fuel. Billy Milner trying to figure that out as Brendan Poole now has gone by. Now he makes the pass on Tom Para. Where's Nick Boyd? There he is. Still a couple back. Briggs Swope continues the lead. Now he last pit on lap 121. Top two. Again, I've yet to pit. There's Swope and then there's Crowell. Again, they each pitted on lap 121 when the yellow came out. Cannot go 80 laps. What Right now what they're hoping for is they're not hold, I, they can't go. They're in trouble. I think they're in trouble. They needed a caution to come out a couple laps ago and they could have assumed the lead. Right when they assumed the lead was the time that they needed a caution, but at this point, their strategy is going to backfire. Pool now working with Justin Cope, who's a lap down, and then right there is Nick Boyd. Then Kayla McCarthy and Tyler Isley right behind them. Now with McCarthy and Isley, eight lap fresher tires than Nick Boyd. Compared to Brennan Poole, 25. 23, 25 lap fresher tires. Jimmy Barr now in the pitch with 25 to go. He could not go the entire way. Swope still continuing to lead. Alan Crowell second, and there's Brennan Poole back there in third position. McCarthy and Isley, by the way, they just made the pass on Nick Boyd. Let's rewind the pass and how they got third position. Excuse me, how they got fourth position, rather. We came in late on that. Here's the pass, McCarthy got a run with Isley off of two. Used the draft for advantage and that's how they got it. So Swope still leading. Three second gap between second and third and guess what? They just passed Brennan Poole. They just passed Brennan Poole for third. And Brennan Poole now fading. And here comes Nick Boyd. Boyd wants fourth. I think right now, if you're running pool, you're gonna want a yellow right now. So you can try and pit. One driver is yet to pit among the leaders, and that is Briggs Swope, 11 second lead. And now the 74 goes by. Let's go back and watch the pass by Kayla McCarthy on Brennan Poole for third. Had a run on the inside, fresher tires, baby. And also the runoff. So now Boyd ahead of Brennan Poole, Billy Milner now pits. Again, Briggs Swope has now coming into pit road this time. Sikosi, oh, Briggs Swope loses control. And that's gonna be an illegal entry into pit road. He did not go between the cones. And your new leader with 20 to go is Kayla McCarthy. Her and Tyler Isley are going to battle it out unless a yellow flag flies. Gonna go to break. When we come back, we will take you to the finish here at Chicagoland Speedway. Stay with us.
everything has just changed. We've got a yellow flag that is out, and that is Billy Milner. Oh, boy. Let's see what happened. Actually, first, we're going to watch pit stops. Top four are in. Who's going to stay out? Top five are in. Again, the big question is, do you stay out? Everyone's paying for the fresh tires. They've got that spare. They've got a couple of spare sets, and they are going to use them. Now what's going to happen with the KTS drivers is the real question. McCarthy wins the race off pit road, followed by Isley, Boyd, Poole, and Susie with a slow stop. Back to fifth. Nick Boyd, I think, had the best stop of them all in third. So let's see what happened here with Billy Miller. Oh, is that car out of gas? Oh, no, he spun it. That's what brought the yellow flag out. Oh. What on earth happened? Let's see how we left the pits. It was a 55. He's good there. Keeping it at 55 miles an hour. Oh. Overshifted, I think. But back down. Oh, he lost it off of two. Cold tires. And that's what caused him to slow down. And then gassed it way too hard with grass on his tires. Oh my goodness. Well, folks, that is definitely going to change everything. Let's listen to uh, race chatter. And outside. Watch your relative, guys. It is. You're going to wait for everybody in front of you. Let's go. We got to go. Here we go. 13 lap shootout. Who do you like to the end of this? Reset the field. McCarthy and Isley in row one. Poole and Boyd, row two. Susie and Farmer in row three. Morris and Clark, row four. And Cope and Dilt, row number five. Oh boy. I see a lot of drivers do some desperate things, I bet you, because they want to win. What do you do, though, for the KTS drivers? McCarthy, I think she's going to fire as soon as she can, and she does. She signaled go, go, go. Look at that. Great start by the top three on that restart. Nick Boyd also read it. McCarthy does not come down. I think she wants Poole to work with her. And once they get single file, they can, once they get clear of Isley, they can cut down. Poole almost has it. I think they're trying to get Susie up there too with that number 12 up in the fourth position. Getting by Nick Boyd. 
And nicely is clear in third spot. Let's see what they do with the 17. Couple of drivers fading back. Wants the lead, inside he goes. I think there's no more team orders anymore. It's time to get aggressive. Brennan Poole to the lead. Tyler Isley second, McCarthy back down to third. The KDS drivers, one, two, three, four, 11 laps to go. Who is going to win it? Nick Boyd makes a move to the inside for fourth. And he's got it for right now, tried to get the help. All the KDS drivers work together. It's a six car breakaway. William Farmer back in seventh spot. Ten laps to go. Continuing, Dylan Clark up there in sixth spot. Can he have a chance to win it? He's up to fifth in a battle with Boyd. Those drivers behind the KTS drivers have to try to work it or else things could go bad like that. Hang on to it, Dylan Clark, and a nice save from the 34. Now William Barmer, Farmer looking for fifth on Boyd. Morris trying to give that 74 a nice push. Now that leaves the mug group here in the M&M's car. Imagine that combination. Oh boy, Farmer loose. Trying to use the apron, eight laps to go. High side getting the advantage. And now Nick Boyd is pulling away from that battle. By himself and fed. But the top four pulled away. 1.6 second lead from first to fifth. Two second lead from first to sixth. That gap is increasing big time. Seven to go. Brennan Poole, Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy, Josh Susie, one, two, three, four. All getting help from Ashton Crowder. Poole looking for his first win of the season. As for Icy and McCarthy, they're looking for win number two. Oh, Poole got loose. Oh, no. Oh, no. The leaders took each other out. Poole still with the lead. Oh, my goodness. A late race yellow. And Tyler Isley breaks home. Tom Para. What in the world just happened? I'm looking over my stats. I go back to look at Isley. I see Poole loose. Oh my goodness. They were doing so well and now everything had just gone completely down the drain for a one, two, three, four finish. A perfect finish was coming up for the KTS team. Oh boy. Here we go, coming in real time, folks. Isley gives Poole a nice push. Oh, he just hooked him. Isley right in front of Poole. Everyone was involved except for, I think, one driver. We're gonna watch from the aerial shot here in slow motion. They're all doing very well. I think the only driver without damage is Josh Shoes. He just hooked the quarter panel. Pull loose. Front damage. McCarthy gets involved. All three wheels up in the air. And I think Susie's the only one to miss it. Oh my heavens. I can't believe that just happened. Now watch the seven of Briggs Swope. Do we get him here? Same with uh, Tom Para. I don't think we do. We're going to watch in real time on their perspective. Let's see what happened here. That's Isley. We want Swope. 
The three wide off of turn two. Kevin Crowell hooking around, they go, oh man. All four wheels off the ground. Well, let's see what happened with Para. Net coated from the 23, all four wheels off the ground too. It's a tough break for Para, he was having a great day. Man, oh man, this race has changed completely on its access. Watch the onboard with Isley. Hooked him. Man, that's a violent crash. We're gonna watch this again from the gearbox and see if we get a better angle on this. Let's watch Tom Perra. This was happening behind him. Oh, he had a miss. Oh my goodness. After all of that, this puts Josh Susi in the lead without any teammates. With front end damage. Nick Boyd is in the second spot. Nick Boyd has the opportunity to win his, in his debut. James Morris is running in third spot. Dylan Clark has the opportunity to win it in his debut as well from the looks of it. Oh my. Get your popcorn out because we are about to have a green-white checkered finish in regulation, not an attempt in overtime. And the lights are off. One lap to go. Brennan Poole, Kayla McCarthy have used their quick repairs. Tyler Isley, I would assume so too. Isley has gone a lap down due to the toe situation. Poole and McCarthy, ninth and tenth. If they get a yellow, they could still have a chance to win it possibly. If the front of the field wreck, we'll just have to see what happens. But now, after all of that, my goodness, Susi looking for his fourth win of the season. So we'll see what goes down. Susi and Boyd, row one. Morris and Clark, row two. Row three is Farmer and Cope, row four. It's going to be Smeraldo and Perrin, row five, McCarthy and Poole. Two lap shootout to determine who's going to victory lane at Chicagoland Speedway. Pace car is in, Susie the right to fire first, he's the control car, and there he goes. Nick Boyd is caught sleeping, and that is what Susie wants, big time. Clark cuts down and tries to work with Morris. You may see some desperate things happen with two to go, especially on this restart. You know Morris is gonna wanna go for it with the 34. There he goes to the outside. Susie tried to block. He doesn't have the run. James Morris to the race at Chicagoland. Susie nearly gets hooked. It got close there. Boyd goes up the track. Lost a lot of time off of turn four. White flag in the air. Final lap is underway. James Morris looking for his first win of the season. Dylan Clark looking to win in his debut. Off of turn number two. What's gonna happen down the back straightaway? Clark's gotta run on the number 21. Final time in Chicagoland. Where's he gonna go? Three and four, they both go to the bottom side of the fan and it's not gonna work out off of turn four. The Candyman, James Morris, is going to victory lane. He takes the Windy City 300 as they crash behind him. Dylan Clark up on his side. Big wreck at the end for the 34, finishing in second spot. But ladies and gentlemen, in his second start of the season, James Morris is going to victory lane and he's about to do some donuts 
donuts and M&Ms are going to taste good tonight. Tonight. Good win, James. Good job, bud. Made the move on the outside off of turn two. We knew he had a faster car than Susie there. You love it for James Morris, but you hate it for the KTS Motorsports team. They had a one, two, three, four finish in hand. Instead, three, six, seven, 16. Left. And then I messed up getting on pit road and then I spin out to the grass. So kind of messed myself up. I had a top 10 car tonight. I hope I didn't slow you up too bad. I'm sorry, guys. So Morris will get ready to do talk with us. We're going to bring everyone in here. I uh, the interview queue. Justin Cope there. I I uh, I hate to blame Netcode because I think it's such a dumb thing. But uh, coming to the finisher, that really was like Netcode. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sorry about that. I guess it didn't really matter. Good thing these are virtual cars. His car was stopped and he blew up. I don't understand that. All right, we got your top three here. All right, we've got Josh Susie, a third place finish. Josh, I'm just going to start with that. Uh, what happened from your perspective on uh, what happened with the K your teammates getting together? Uh, I just think it was a freak accident. We had a really big run going on the backstretch, and um, uh, Tyler just sucked up a little bit more than he was expecting, and then uh, he caught Brennan on the turn into the corner. Nothing was intentional, and no one really knows what happened there. It's just kind of one of them freak racing deals that uh, catch you off guard every once in a while. I know you had some front end damage before that restart. Did it have to do the, Did it have to relate to that accident, or just how how did you suffer that from your perspective? Yeah, I got into the back of Kayla when that wreck happened. Um, I, I bounded up on the brakes, which she did too, and just we were all right packed together like sardines, so it was really hard to miss her. And I got a little bit of damage there, and uh, you know, it, there was only three laps left. <laughs> you can't really afford to pit with no engine damage, so. I, uh, I let the dice roll. Who do you want to give shoutouts to tonight? Uh, Speed Demon setups first and foremost. Uh, you know they do a great job every week as always. Appreciate them being on the car. Everyone at KTS Racing, Brennan showing up, uh, running with us. We appreciate it a lot. Getting some sound advice from him and uh, Ashton Crowder spotting for him. So uh, those those guys bring a lot of knowledge to the table. We're able to pick their brains. It helps a lot. Uh, I'm glad the setup was fast. We made some adjustments. They worked out in the race. Um, you know. That's the race, and sometimes you think you got locked up one through four, and these things happen. So, you know, nothing to hang our heads about. We had real fast cars. We'll, we'll get them on track again for next week and come back out here and try to put a stomping on them again. All right. Thanks for the time, Josh. Thank you. So Susie comes home in third. Let's go to our second-place finisher in his debut, Dylan Clark. Dylan, how much fun did you have tonight? Oh, man, that was a blast. So much fun. Definitely was. Um, what more did you need possibly to get by uh, Morris to go for the win? Uh, probably not damage on my left front. I got that late in the race after I used my fast. And just really, if I didn't have that, I probably would have had a chance to get up at the line. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Uh, C4 Motorsports, Speed Demon Setups. And really just NSRL for giving me this opportunity. All right, sounds good. Great run tonight in your debut, Dylan. We look forward to seeing you in the future. 10-4, thank you, sir. So Dylan Clark finishing second. And now it's time to go to victory lane where we're about to talk with a first-time winner in just his second start. James Morris, how does this one feel, man? Oh, man, it's it's incredible. Um, 
a lot of hard work put into this. I've got to give a huge shout out to C4 Motorsports, Nitro, the, the guys behind me in the team, man. I couldn't do this without them. Um, to get my first win here in the league, car, in the league, in a next gen car with hardly any experience, man. It, it's just awesome, man. I, I can't thank my team enough. A big shout out to them. I mean, like, I, I just, I can't do it without them. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Walk me through that run you had on uh, Josh Susie because that was a huge run you had down the back straightaway. And your MO has been throughout these, the, not just your first start, but also your second start as well. You go for passes no matter what, how much, how many laps le are left in the race. Yeah, that. <laughs> You know, I'm notorious for, like, making a move sometimes, you know, like that. But going to that last restart, you know, my biggest thing was I'm not always the best at restarts. So I, I thought, it, you know, if I could just get a good restart um, and not spin the tires because we had, what, probably, what, 14, 15 laps somewhere along, along that on these tires. So... Coming to the, to the green, I'm like, okay, you know, just don't spin the tires. Get a good, you know, get a good restart, get the momentum, and just try to get to the outside. And it worked. And if, if he would have came up and bought me, I don't know. But I used that momentum, went through the corner, and went up high, exactly where the car was hooked up all night. I could run that middle and be super quick. Um, it, it felt great. And I just, I, I can't thank my guys enough, man. It's like I'm over here, like, shaking in my voice and just, like, all just, I feel like my brain's in a thousand different directions. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy this one, man. We're glad to see you in the league. Uh, congratulations on this win. Thank you, and I appreciate it. And appreciate you up there in the booth, man. Uh, heck of a job. We appreciate you very, very much. Well, well Candy's going to go well with donuts tonight, huh? You got that right, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, man. James Morris taking home the win. First win in the National Sim Racing League, and you know he's going to enjoy that one for sure. Here are the race results from tonight. Morris, Clark, Susie, Cope, Farmer, Poole, McCarthy, Smeraldo, Boyd, and Aaron. That's your top ten. Man, everything changed big time. So two things. Number one. The accident taking out Billy Milner and number two, the KDS drivers getting together. That's got to be a shame with Poole, McCarthy, Susie, and Isley. That is for sure. I thought we definitely appreciate Susie's time to talk with us. There are the rest of the results on your screen. So that's going to do it for our broadcast tonight. Next week, we are at the Kentucky Speedway. That should be a good one. You don't want to miss out on that one. Thought for a moment I heard something, but never mind. Don't miss out on that one at the Kentucky Speedway. It's the Bluegrass 250 here at 8.45 p.m. on the National Sim Racing League Twitch page, or Facebook page, excuse me, and twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. Shout out to our sponsors, Speed Demon Setup, Speed Demon Graphics, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Butt Kicker, and Elevated Outdoors. Shout out to uh, Josh Susi, our main guy in charge, and Justin Diltz. Also, Byron Bartlett working in air traffic control tonight. I'm Marty Sakala signing off. Congratulations to James Morris. First career win in the National Sim Racing League. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So long from Chicago, everyone.